Uh, yes, good morning and welcome back. So, we are introduce uh, certain compact bedding, especially the last theorem of H1 of omega contained in L2 of omega for omega bounded will be used immediately during the weak formulation from the. So, we will have one more theorem state relic compression. Yeah, it is important that you should go through these proofs in our previous course. Let omega a subset of R n bounded open this are more general results then 1 for p less than n we already made this comment w 1 p of omega compactly contained in in uh, and of course we also assume smooth smooth in l q of omega for all 1 less than or equal to q p less than p less than or equal to q less than p star I already commented you do not get uh, compactness for the case when p equal to 2, when 2 uh, p equal to n that is w 1 n of omega which is the direction you have and at infinity you have l q of omega for all p for all for all q or q in n to infinity. Of course, at infinity you do not even have the continuous embedding. So, you cannot expect uh, the compact embedding. Okay. 3 when p greater than n and uh, you have w 1 p of, uh, of omega compactly embedded in c of omega pi. So, you get it. So, the non trivial part of the proof is only for 1 and the other the uh, proof for 2 can be easily deduced from the proof for 1. So, that is not difficult you just use it and you can get that. So, what do you do uh, for uh, proof of 1 is non trivial. So, we do not make any comments trivial 2 follows from 1. So, how do you do that you just choose some epsilon positive and small and then w 1 n of epsilon you can omega is contained in w 1 n minus epsilon of omega that you know and then this one n minus epsilon is strictly less than n and you can apply the part 1 to get this compactly contained in L q for all q uh, uh, in, uh, less than p less than n minus epsilon star and then you can see that epsilon goes to 0 this goes to infinity as n epsilon goes to 0 and uh, you can actually get that one. The third one is a kind of a classical result. Uh, uh, how do you get compactly embedding? How do you get a relatively compact set? Uh, to get a relatively compact set here you prove e q continuity and boundedness. So, 3 can be pro again proved uh, in a straight. So, the part of 1 is a non trivial case. So, to prove one it is much more complicated I say I do not have time even to comment here. So, basically you what you do is that you look for how to, just like in C of omega bar you have this C of omega bar you look for E q continuity and so there is a uh, characterization how to say a set is relatively compact. Similarly, you have to first prove a certain result uh, how do you get a, this is already 
done probably in the uh, we have seen these such things uh, in our uh, part one of this course. The characterization of uh, compact sets in L q of omega. So, let me not uh, recall such things here. So, let me go to the final part of this uh, thing before variation of formulation inequalities. I want to prove a couple of one important inequality. So, I do not know I will have time, but uh, let me state first and then we will do that one. The first important thing we will be immediately using is Poincare inequality. Okay. What is Poincare inequality? So, omega bounded open set in R n, open set in R n. The proof is quite easy here and uh, then there exists then there exists a constant c equal to that depends on c and p such that norm of gradient of u at p l p is less than or equal to constant into norm of gradient of u at l p for all u in w 1 p 0. Of course, this result will not be true for w 1 p because of the constant functions. Okay. So, this implies uh, this also implies as a corollary uh, u going to grade u at p is an equivalent norm is an equivalent norm which will be using in the existence theory in w 1 p not of omega. So, immediately this uh, the L 2 L p or L 2 estimates can be estimated by that way. Okay. So, the proof of this is pretty easy. Uh, say for example, uh, the easiest way of doing is that if omega is a uh, minus a to a and then it is easy. So, suppose you have this omega like this okay. and you know that it is 0 here, u is 0 here, this is your omega. Okay. So, u is 0 here. So, you can write down any u x here. So, this we consider as x prime. This is your x n, x n. Then I can write down x prime x n as an integral of its derivative. That is all. And then integrate by parts. So, you can for every x in omega, I can write it as u of x is equal to integral minus a, it is 0 here, you see. So, minus a to x n uh, d n of u x prime x t, d n of u x prime of t d t. And then you can immediately estimate modulus. So, you can even get the constant estimate, it will be something like a diameter. So, you will have 2 a power p by q apply the Helder inequality to get uh, integral minus uh, uh, it is a bigger number. So, I am taking the modulus d n of u power p this you are integrating with respect to the last variable that is equal to d x n if you want it you can write over 1 over p. Now, again integrate okay integrate with respect to uh, so uh, you power it and integrate with respect to, to x dx x fully and already x n integration is done so you get uh, some constants etc and which will eventually will lead your norm of u x at uh, l p is you power it uh, with respect to p and then you integrate. Okay. P less than or equal to 
and the constant depends on basically the diameter it depends only on a constant into you work out such details lp for general omega what do you use that if you have a other omega uh, you what you can do is that you can always uh, if you have a bounded domain omega you can always find a rectangle contained here and then u is 0 here now see you see u is 0 here what so you extend by 0 u tilde u u tilde is 0 here so you extend by 0 here and then you get to for estimate for u tilde and u tilde is 0 outside so using this argument you can actually prove immediately so let me not x here okay so you can immediately prove that u at lp is less than or equal to m of grade u at very very important inequality so you should not uh, forget it this Poincare inequality so so i want to make some remarks and uh, which is also exercises okay so don't forget all this the inequality is true you don't need u to be zero in the entire gamma the inequality you can prove this so i will only make inequality is true on this space set of all u in w1 p of omega all these factors you can use to study various boundary condition and the trace value is 0 on gamma and not. So, what you are basically doing is that you are having a domain omega and you have dividing this domain say gamma naught. So, this may be your gamma naught. Only thing it should be not almost everywhere. So, it should, it should be so. So, even if it is a small a uh, boundary if the trace value is 0 you have your thing ok gamma naught can be anything with uh, something like a non trivial measure. So, the inequality is not true in the inequality is not true in h 1 uh, h 1 or or that mean matter w 1 p of omega of course, we are assuming omega is bounded, but uh, uh, as for uh, as the constant function constant function u equal to c is it say in h 1 of omega. So, it implies the grade u is 0 right. So, it cannot be true in that one. The interesting point is that uh, these constants are the only troubling terms. So, so if you can uh, make an equivalence class and if you can caution space you are eventually get uh, inequality get inequality. So, that tr uh, the trouble is uh, the trouble is the constant the trouble is exactly the constant functions trouble is exactly the constant functions we will discuss this uh, more general theorem and in fact Poincare inequality is true in the caution space in so you caution it out I will uh, tell you how to define for more general case I will make a theorem for the more general case ok. So, I want to state uh, uh, one interesting things or one more theorem a theorem which will be a corollary to a more general theorem I do not know I will get time to prove it. Uh, uh, but uh, 
and let us see so before pongari inequality let me do something some more comments so this uh, anyway the comment thing and uh, you got it okay so you can i trade this process so one more comment I trade the process uh, process to show that you going to so you need only the highest order derivative sigma norm of d alpha of u at L p with mod alpha only equal to m is an equivalent norm. So, you have the basically you have the power inequality with the highest derivative. So, the uh, basically it is an equivalent norm means uh, the highest order derivative works a norm there or can be estimated from below by the general norm. So, the estimating from below is the important thing. So, basically grade u you estimated in terms of u. Similar, so, if you look at the second order, so second order derivatives you want to estimate from below by the derivatives, other derivatives can be. So, the lower order derivatives has to be estimated in terms of the highest order derivative is an equivalent norm. In W and P not of omega, so you see. So, these things uh, you have to uh, we may use it if you have time to study. Now, let me state the Poincare inequality. So, what happens uh, is exactly something like I am doing it in a slightly different way of the quotient space and later you will see the full quotient space in a w m p of omega we are going to define the quotient space. Okay. Let omega bounded open 1 less than or equal to p the infinity then or oh, this Poincare Wettinger Poincare is already that Poincare Wettinger inequality. Okay, so, we are doing a Poincare then there exists c positive such that as I said it is the only troubling terms in H 1 are the constant terms. So, so, you have to somehow remove the constants from that one okay? or you have to find with appropriate constant. So, you are removing a constant u bar I will tell you what is constant less than or equal to norm u at grade u at p where okay, u bar is the average 1 over modulus of omega. You can take a even the average on the boundary. So, let me do that one you have to remove that you will see soon that kind of thing the average of u. You can take the boundary averages as well average of u in omega. So, you can remove that average constant and then you get this one and further is also there. If p is less than n, so you get uh, norm u minus u bar at p star is less than or equal to constant in okay. So, this we, uh, theorem will be a corollary to a general theorem and that is what the theorem which we are going to. So, let me uh, I do not know whether I can prove result uh, uh, I may not have the time. So, let us see first let us uh, this thing. So, a, a proof you can read it from the book that would be good. So, I want to see this space w m plus 1 p omega okay. and uh, so omega as usual is a bounded open set uh, and p m of omega space of polynomials of degree 
space of <coughs> polynomials of degree in omega n variable degree less than or equal to m ok. So, what we are going to we are going to see the quotient space quotient space x equal to w m plus 1 p and quotienting out by all polynomials by degree omega. And of course, when m equal to 0 this is w 1 p and your p 0 uh, is nothing but uh, constants. So, that is uh, identified with the real line. So, you have your this space ok. So, that is what we do it ok. So, you have this quotient space and what is your rela uh, equivalence relation there? U equivalent to V if uh, if U minus V is a polynomial of degree less than or equal to M is in degree M. Okay. So, this is according to that you will have your equivalence class u. Okay. So, you have your equivalence class and any two elements in a equivalence class is differ by a polynomial of degree m that is what you mean it. Okay. Then you can define a norm. So, you are somehow you are looking for the best norm possible. Okay, uh, so, in an equivalence class if it is a in this case here if you are taking two elements here v u then u minus v is a constant that is the equivalence relation here. So, among that you are looking for some the best norm in an infimum you are telling. So, you are looking for all the norm uh, the norms in that equivalence class and looking for the best one infimum. So, that way so how do you define a norm? So, you can define a norm. So, on x uh, of this equivalence class <coughs> this norm is defined on x uh, is looking at it infimum uh, norm of v plus p instead of constant there you are looking for all the uh, polynomials is an m plus 1 p norm m plus 1 v and for all p in p that is what you have. If you look at it here you will get that norm of v the difference any two vector you are looking at it uh, x space x is this one is nothing but you are looking at infimum or v plus c you see for all c in r i. So, that is why so you are somehow you are choosing the least norm among or by adding constant which constant gives you the best ok. And this norm is equivalent. So, the theorem is basically theorem is uh, uh, the uh, above norm above norm is equivalent to equivalent to the highest norm which I will think. So, equivalent to v m plus 1 p this by definition summation norm of d power alpha v at p and you are summing over all m plus 1. See on the n plus 1 variable when you add a polynomial of degree m uh, the m plus 1 derivative of that vanishes. So, it is the material which v from that equivalence class you take it irrespective of whichever v you take it the contribution from the highest order derivative does not come and uh, the, uh, the it is a very uh, it is a bit of an analysis proof some contradiction argument you are basically to prove you have to show that uh, so, the norm u uh, you should be able to estimate this is what basically you want to prove it constant into v 
I did m plus 1, p, and then uh, some constant frame into norm of v at m plus 1, p. Okay. And this part is obvious, that is because this is a bigger term, so it comes with the same constant, that is not a problem. But this portion, so you see all your other derivatives can be estimated by that. Okay. So, so uh, let me not give the proof because I do not have the time because I want to uh, I want to do something. Uh, okay. So at least let me uh, define the uh, yeah, so I, I want to define one more interesting thing, which is an application to what are called the interpolation error as a corollary. So, the numerical analysts use this, what are called an interpolation estimate. That is why the one reason to state this at the end of it after Sobolo spaces interpolation. Let, uh, let V be a Banach space. Banach space uh, containing W is a bigger that is what interpolation you do. In numerics uh, when you want to look for a solution in this space uh, you will uh, interpolate and interpolate at functions uh, in a bigger space. And pi is the interpolation pi from W m plus 1 p of omega. Uh, to v. So, it is uh, you are making for the uh, taking elements from w 1 p of omega do some finite element or finite difference method and construct functions which will be something like here it will be h 1 space that will be will be a kind of an L 2 space something like that one. Uh, continuous linear and it fixes p m element that means uh, uh, when you have a polynomial, many of the these tricks will study even when you do a numerical approximation uh, uh, deriving numerics uh, computations for the integral. You construct various numerical schemes, many methods <coughs> by uh, on a certain order of polynomial it will be exact. So, that is what we are exactly doing it p, this should be for all p in or uh, p in p m. You see it fixes the polynomial p and uh, then this is the uh, interpolation. Uh, then there exists a constant c positive such that you have an interpolation. So, you can see that the u is your solution pi is your interpolation thing and it is error this is basically an error. The error is estimated in v because pi of u is in v is less than or equal to constant into uh, summation of u at m plus 1 p of course, with the not full uh, m plus 1 p. So, um, yeah sorry only the highest order derivatives are calculated that is the whole idea right constant into u at uh, m plus 1 p. So, the proof is trivial, okay, I will skip it, you just work, skip, the proof is trivial. And one more uh, proof of the Poincare inequality, let me just state uh, proof of immediate now, it is a special case Poincare Wettinger. Uh, it is uh, it's just to take v equal to L p and uh, you define pi u is equal to u bar that is all. Okay. Pi u equal to u bar is the average one over mod omega uh, integral over omega. Okay. That is it, it follows from that you are just apply that one. 
So you basically gives you no move u minus u bar. Okay. And no, look at here. It has to fix it, right? So pi is a mapping from basically w1p to l2. You see. And uh, what is your p0? Your p0 is nothing but real line. And uh, if u is equal to c is a constant, your pi u is nothing but u. That is it. This is the one you have to check it. Because u is a constant, it will come out, it is uh, u bar equal to u. Yeah, u equal to u bar. It is that constant. So, it follows. There is one more inequality uh, in case uh, I will not state now here is a time uh, only if I have time to do the uh, what do you say it is called a cones inequality. So, if I have time to do an elasticity system uh, I will do it because you have to prove some positive definite cones inequality. It is not difficult to taste it, but let me not do it if we can do in a for elasticity systems because so when you study PDE end of it you have to prove the ellipticity, but in systems all the derivatives may not be appearing. So, you have to estimate uh, that estimates uh, in terms of the full estimate you have to show that the PDE to prove is basically to prove a PDE is elliptic uh, the combination of the derivatives appearing should uh, give you all the derivative essentially you should get the information about that one. So, with this I will stop here and now we will move on to the weak formulation from next lecture onwards. Thank you, thank you very much.